I just got a Lenovo ThinkPad. It's an X1 Carbon and it came with Windows 10 on it. I'm going to put Ubuntu 15.04 on it as well, but I want to keep Windows in case I need to run some Windows programs later. So I'm going to dual boot my computer. First I'll go to releases.ubuntu.com slash 15.04. I'll scroll down on that page and look for the 64-bit ISO image. I'm using 64 bits because I have an i7 processor. I'm also plugging in a thumb drive because I'm going to make this a bootable USB in order to install the operating system. Clicking on the 64-bit link should start the download process. I've already downloaded this in order to save time for this demo, so I'm going to look for the file in my downloads folder. It's right where I expected to find it. Now I just want to right click on the file and click on properties. This will allow me to double check that the file I actually downloaded is in a .iso format. Before we can actually use this ISO file in order to start the Ubuntu operating system, we need to put it in a format that's actually bootable. In order to do this, I'll search for bootable USB. One of the first matches that will come up is a program called Rufus. I'll click on this first link to take me to the Rufus website, which is located at rufus.akeo.ie. Scroll down on the Rufus page and look for the most recent release of the portable version of Rufus. Click on this link in order to start the download. The Rufus executable went to my downloads folder by default. If I go to this location, I can now double click on the program in order to start the installation process. First we'll click yes to allow Rufus to make changes to our computer in order for it to install. And then I'll select no because I don't want Rufus to automatically update. Most of the Rufus settings can be left at the defaults. Just make sure that you're using an ISO image to create the bootable disk. Then select the ISO file we downloaded previously, open this, and then click Start. Click Yes in order to download additional dependencies. Write the image using the default ISO mode. A good thing to point out is that anything on your USB drive will be erased through this process. I'm starting with a blank USB drive for this very reason. Press OK to continue. I've sped up the creation process for the purpose of this demo. Don't be surprised if yours takes a lot longer than this. Once complete, check your USB drive to make sure that the files on it look something similar to this. The next step is to make room on your hard disk for your Ubuntu installation. Search your computer for the word disk and select the option Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. You can see that the Windows C drive is taking up most of the space on this hard disk. We want to shrink this partition in order to make room for a new partition for the Ubuntu operating system. Right click on the Windows C drive and click the Shrink Volume option. The dialog that appears will show you the space on your C drive before you shrink the volume. It will also show you the available space for shrinking and the amount of space that will be left after the shrink. You'll notice that there's not a lot of space here available to shrink. Ultimately, I want to have a much smaller space for my Windows partition than my Ubuntu partition. What we need to do is remove some unmovable files, temporarily, and then we'll add them back in after resizing the partition. First, we can turn off the Windows Restore Point files by searching for System Protection. Double click on the Create a Restore Point option that appears. If it doesn't pop up automatically, select it from your toolbar. You can see that protection is on by default. 
So we want to configure this and disable protection. Click OK. Select yes to turn protection off for your system. And then OK. The next thing I'm going to do is turn off the hibernation settings. Search for power settings. Select power and sleep settings. Click on additional power settings. Choose when to turn off the display. And then change advanced power settings. Double check that hibernation is set to never. If you visit the Ubuntu certification page, you'll notice that the X1 Carbon does not actually support hibernation for Ubuntu. Now we just need to restart our computer for these changes to take place. I'm going to speed up this process in the video a little bit. Once again, search your computer for disk and click on the option Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Like previously, right click on the Windows C drive and then select Shrink Volume. Now I can shrink almost my entire partition. I'm going to shrink as much as possible in order to make more room for the Ubuntu installation. Now there should be a good chunk of unallocated space available, which we'll use for our new installation. In order to actually run the installation process, make sure your USB drive is inserted and then go to the start option on your main menu, select settings, and then scroll down to update and security. Then click the recovery option. And under advanced startup, select restart now. Now you can select use a device and then select USB HDD. This time when your computer starts up, you should see a new option to install with Ubuntu. Use your arrows to select this and then press enter. The welcome screen that appears will ask you to select the language. I have chosen English. Then click continue. I'm not going to connect to Wi-Fi right now, that's fine. Click continue. The system will give you a few warnings. These all look okay, so I'm going to click continue again. Now the installation type step is important. You want to make sure that you select the last option which is called something else. If you don't do this, it will erase your standard configuration settings and you'll no longer be able to start up your Windows installation. Then click continue again. Now we want to install to the free space partition. And despite what I actually do originally in this video by selecting the empty one, the zero megabyte one, you want to actually select the one that has some size to it. In my case, it's 477925 megabytes. It may be a little different for your system. Now, the first thing we want to do is set up a swap memory. 
Think of swap as a failover for when you have too many things in memory. I'm going to set my swap to the exact size of my RAM. In my case, that's 16 gigabytes. That's generally a good practice since it supports features like hibernation, although we saw earlier that the X1 doesn't actually support hibernation. Then select swap area and press OK. Again, select the free space partition with the largest size and press the plus icon. This time we want to use the whole remaining area and we want to make sure it's being used as the extension for journaling file system. As a mount point, we want to make sure to choose the base and then press OK. Highlight the root partition we just created, and then select Install Now. Click Continue to confirm that you're OK with changes being written to the disk. Now select your time zone. New York is OK for me, so I'm going to click on Continue. Select the keyboard layout that you prefer. English is okay for me, so I'm going to select that and click continue. Now I'm going to enter my name. That's automatically going to create a computer name and a username for me. Then fill out your password fields. And finally, I like to encrypt my hard drive. Uh, just in case my computer was ever to get taken or lost or left behind somewhere, I want to make sure that the files and the information on it cannot easily be observed by other people. I'm going to speed up the video for the installation process. Don't be concerned if this takes a little bit of time for you. When prompted, restart your computer. The following screen will appear each time you start your computer. Select Ubuntu to start the Ubuntu laptop, or select Windows Boot Manager to start the Windows installation. Then enter the password for your encrypted hard drive, and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching.